We wanted the employers to share their experience of employing somebody with autism and we wanted the support network to show what was on offer to employers. And then the entrepreneur panel, um, the business owners, was about if generic employment doesn't work for you, then you can go and do your own thing and do what does work for you. People need to know what autistic people are. People don't know what autism is. So there's no use saying, we want autistic people, we want autism. But you don't even know what it is. Listening to autistic people will enable employers to build infrastructure, to build policy, to deliver the correct training about what autistic people need and what benefits they can bring to the table instead of what deficits they are. One of the things that's clear that actually there's not really a autism friendly and a typical friendly thing of a business and the benefits um, that we've implemented in our business uh, for people on the spectrum have actually benefited the whole business. Uh, we have a lot of students on the Game Art course that, that are on the spectrum um, and they struggle once they finish their degree to find work and get employers to to think differently about, about taking somebody on that's on the spectrum. By understanding how neurodiverse people work, it's also helped us to understand and face how typical people work as well. Some people want to make sure that the individuals that currently work for them are more included and they're getting the best out of, of those individuals. Other people are looking for inclusive hiring processes, so they want to actually purposefully go out there and, and hire autistic talent. The way in which employers select people for jobs is so deeply flawed. Well, a blind recruitment process is something that's been coming up uh, more and more now in some industry. Some of the larger organisations such as um, the civil service are using this and it alleviates the scoring system that autistics do struggle to match. A test of social interaction skills in a highly stressed, unstructured environment. How on earth is that supposed to tell you whether somebody would be a good data analyst? There's this uh, ethos that if you can talk about your what you can do. You're going to get the job over someone who can show you what you can do and really it should be the people who can show you what to do. They're really not the best way to determine if an autistic person is capable of doing the job or not. And a lot of them will fail just because they well, will not get the job just because they fail at doing the interview. So when you want to employ somebody what you need to think of is what are you looking for? What cognitive skills are you looking for? What technical skills are you looking for? And you test for those and that's exactly what we do. Hopefully if we can get more businesses that are doing like-minded things then we can have new recruits, new people with autism that have actually had previous good experiences and therefore we're not trying to break down those barriers but we're actually all on the same page with the work that we're doing. I really think that employers should be thinking about young, pe young people and taking them on. I think it's a brilliant opportunity for them. Um, it gives them a disability confident badge. We've got this you know, from a business point of view, we've got this pool of untapped um, awesomeness that we can just pull upon. Um, and the standard of work's gone up. To see more autistic people be employed would be a good start. Um, to basically just spread awareness and so that more and more people know about the things that they need to take into consideration. You want to improve your business, you want to get better results, you want to make your business more profitable and more successful, make it more neurodiverse. People get really scared when they look at the infrastructure that needs to change because of the money that's attached to it. But when people look at autism friendliness and they look at their awful workplace and realise how autistic unfriendly it is, attitudes cost nothing. They cost nothing. And to be autistic friendly begins with cultural and attitude changes because they don't cost a thing. And they go a long way to create safe, open environments. Who wouldn't want a company that has loyal employees, uh, that retains them, um, that makes you money, um, promotes honesty, positivity, um, and uh, it makes people better managers, it makes your companies better. It's, I don't know anybody that wouldn't want that for their businesses, and this is what we're hearing today. And this isn't just because somebody sat there and thinks, oh, this would be a nice thing to say. This is based on real life. It's based on research. It's how we've excluded before and how going forward we are going to include.
Certainly, what needs to happen is something at quite a high level and it's a cultural shift within those organisations. My experience has been so far, sadly, that quite often in employment the, the, the cavalry is only called in when something goes wrong. So when somebody has, has overstepped a boundary or their performance has not been up, up to scratch. It is possible to be in employment and still be on the autistic spectrum, but also it can, may also be important to actually spread awareness of the fact that support is also, can also be very essential. Seeking that extra external support has been critical and there's lots of, there's lots of it available, so that would be my advice. I think what people are not aware of, which came through in the panel questions today, is all the support that's out there from Remploy, from Access to Work, loads of other providers, and the fact that it does make people better managers, generally, all round. You know, conferences like this help break the barriers between neurotypicals and autistic people. Um, the understanding of autism is not known. It's only recently become a thing. One in a hundred people in the UK have autism and we need to support those people. We can share this. I mean, I, I've set this up. Um, it, it was, it's been stressful, but it's fairly straightforward that people could take this away and go and copy the format in their own location, whether that be Chester or um, just up the road in Real or, or Manchester, Liverpool, whatever. Copy it and get as many employers to start thinking differently about changing what they do and it's about changing the environment not the person. If it isn't for my family I wouldn't have been able to, to cope in any environment. Um, it is about that family support as well and almost taking the fear away. There's one of me in each of the counties in North Wales and I'd like to change the whole county overnight but unfortunately I need the support of quite a few people. As great as the project and gauge the changes, unfortunately after this project finishes there might be some young people left going back to the same position they began with before engage the change. I would like to see something change with that. I would like to see them in sustained employment and again this goes back to evaluation in Cardiff University. If we can take that learning into Welsh Government hopefully that will change. I think what struck me was how diverse our panellists were. Each one's had their own unique journey into self-employment. They all do very different things, but the message that came through loud and clear from all of them was if you're passionate about something, and if you have the focus and the drive to do it, then self-employment can be the way, and there's nothing that should get in the way of you being successful, if you really care and work hard enough. There's a real pragmatic resourcefulness about some autistic people. We just go, I need to earn some money, I can't do it there, where shall I do it, I'll have a go at this. For some people they are just able to just go for it, they have an idea, they need to earn some money, they don't quite know how to do, uh, do it in any other, other way, uh, maybe traditional employment which sometimes doesn't always suit autistic people and they've just gone for it. Every autistic person has an ability, you know, we have a special ability that only us can do sort of thing, you know, that one of the things that only we can do ourselves. Everyone's got their abilities, so why is it called disability? You know, why not different abilities or why not just different people, you know? The more we talk about something, the better understanding we all have. We see this as a stepping stone into something that could build, build legs and grow, and we want to do that because we've forever been learning what it is to be autistic through medical narratives or from your doctor or from Raymond or from lots of other stereotypes but I want to go to my community I want to say I'm autistic are you autistic too do you do this too do you cope like that too ah cool well there are a number of steps so obviously as a, as a politician I think in, in that context uh, uh, UK level um, there are changes are needed in the DWP we still need to give autism a statutory identity in Wales. We still need to give people rights with a rights-based approach uh, in Wales. Well, I think it's about the autistic community gaining the strength to believe that they um, have every right to be employed as everyone else and not relying on what professionals tell them.
This is a great moment in time. We've got an opportunity because of these kinds of conversations to really make a difference to the way that people with autism are viewed and we have an opportunity whilst we're having these conversations to look at the skills and abilities that autistic people can bring to a workplace. But it can be scary and I understand that. Maybe it's the first time that they've employed somebody who is autistic and they don't really know what to do or who to go to for support. Quite often it, there's some difficulties around terminology and um, what to say. Nobody wants to say the wrong thing. Um, but it's knowing, and that's why this kind of uh, event is really useful, it's knowing who to go to so that they can hold their hand and they can actually um, get you the right information, the right support that you need.